crew, you better watch out. We're getting ready to start launching rednecks at you. Heaven help us, baby's got her blue jeans on I'm making some emergency oil lamps with baby food jars, cotton rope, and vegetable oil. These are good sources of heat or light in an emergency situation. So fill the jar with oil, put the lid back on, prime the wick by turning it upside down and soaking the wick, and then give it a light. <laughs> If your touch shattered me like glass Since this country's gotten so stupid and liberal and your kids are now identifying as dogs and cats Guess what, motherfucker? My dogs are identifying as a dependent this year We gonna get that tax money, baby Cause you see I'm a dinosaur Should've died out a long time before What have I become? Kenneth. Everyone get your heads down! Kenneth. That was a drive-by attempt, Frank! Kenneth, that was a neighbor's car backfiring! They're coming for the eggs! Kenneth! They're coming for the eggs! The whole system is designed to disconnect you from your intuition. Why? Disconnected people are easy to manipulate. Everything from sunscreen to politics to the food industry. It's all designed to disconnect and manipulate you. We are in the middle of a war right now, but it's not a traditional war. It's a war on consciousness. It's a war on freedom. Hoppy moved the chickens onto the rye last night. We actually did it a little too late, so we have like three out, but they're just enjoying this fresh new grass. The end goal is to move them way back where the cows were so they can do a good cleanup job. And this is actually, this rye is actually for the cows. We'll get them back next month. Fun fact, I get up early, one, because I 
can't go back to sleep. Two, I enjoy the quiet time. <laughs> I'm just, I, I got the eggs last night, but I'm getting these because somebody's coming. Um, a farm is coming to uh, buy us out of it. I got me some new bibs. <laughs> I don't like country bumpkin anymore. I'm not getting my coveralls. I really got them because we're going to the mountains. And I don't want to like a country bumpkin in the mountains. But uh, they're, they're real baggy and so it's nice to be a little more nimble in these bibs here. I just got from Amazon, but highly recommend. <laughs> got two pockets full of eggs. Let's don't, uh, let's don't crack them. Let's do good today. <laughs> yes, sir. No, I wasn't doing anything. Hey, what up world? It's your boy Country Bo. So look, check us out. Today is harvest day. We about to get ready to harvest our meat birds. And um, we made a homemade harvesting cone. So we took one of the vinegar bottles and we cut the top out and the bottom and kind of cut the bottom out like that where it kind of angle. And we also put the um, bottle on the two by four. <laughs> And talking about the good old times, bragging on how it used to be. But I won't. Things country boys hate. I think I'll do a wrap around. Wrap around. I think men hunt and fish because if guys are going to spend a lot of time together in some remote place, just the two of you alone, something eventually has to end up dead. Otherwise, it starts to feel too much like a date. Most men cannot go up to their friend, hey, do you want to get up really early tomorrow and go roll a boat around the lake for a couple hours? We'll sit close and whisper. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> But you throw in, I'll bring my gun in case we see a duck. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, let's go for the weekend, just us. Cool. Yeah. You see that building right there? That shit used to be a books a million, but we don't fucking read in Alabama, so it's becoming a boot barn, baby. Hey, you don't have to buy your chickens feed from the feed store. I know tons of people are concerned about feed prices rising, about the quality of the feed, what their chickens are eating, whether or not it's affecting their laying. I have not personally had the issue with laying, but here are some things that I'm looking into to do next spring in order to offset our feed costs a little bit, make our chickens healthier, and kind of become more self-sustainable in the way of feeding our chickens. Number one, I know this is not an option for everybody, but believe it or not, and this may be a bit of a controversial opinion, I don't know, if your chickens have a good area to free range during the warmer months, they really don't need you to buy them feed. They are master foragers, they're going to find bugs, they're going to find little rodents, they're going to find all kinds of stuff to eat and get their protein in. So between free ranging and then we feed our chickens table scraps 
during the warmer months if free ranging is an option definitely can help lower your feed cost number two, two i have been doing research on the best things to grow at home for chickens here are a few of the things that i have been looking into find things that are high in protein and fiber you can plant actual crops you can do sprouts you've got options do your own research but figure out what the best things are to grow in your zone that are really high in fiber and protein for your chickens. And again, I would probably supplement this with table scraps because they're my little garbage disposal. And last but not least, mealworms and maggots. These are surprisingly easy to grow, breed, create, I don't know. But either way, in doing my research, it's so easy. And hello protein. Your chickens will love that protein. So now is the time. If you're concerned about buying chicken feed or what's in chicken feed, do some research because there are other options. Have a nice day. Or just that, like they're normal. They're not straight out of Pinterest. You're in for a real treat because nothing around here looks Pinterest perfect, as you can tell. So let's go. Let's go look at all of the animal and garden and stuff that I have built from trash. I'm the trash lady. Next up, we took down the Intex pool. That was a piece of crap because the pump breaks the first year and it costs more than the whole damn pool. Yeah, we turned that into a greenhouse. Amen. This right here is just a temporary housing for Petey and her sister. And why? Because we didn't want to breed them yet. They're still a little too young. Now, this is not going to stay like this, but all I did was take a little bit of wire over there, stretch it over a trash can, put a, put a um, tarp up, and boom. They've got shelter for now. You do a little PD. Now, will it stay like that? Nope, but you gotta start at the bottom. Now, let me show you this whelping box that I built out of nothing but pallet. And right now, everything's covered in tarps because I don't have a roof yet built for them. We're doing that this week. So, here we go. It is supported by cinder blocks so I can get that good garden and poop right on out of there. Doesn't have to be composted. And then when we're gonna lift up the lid, this is a whelping box because we got lion head babies. Yeah, mama just had all these babies. Yes, oh my God, it's something cute. To the chicken and turkey pen that I built myself in Coop. And I don't know how to build deadly squat. So yeah. Treated post, we just dug up, put it in the ground. Boom, sealed them with some concrete down below. 16 gauge wire, chicken wire at the bottom. Don't you, don't you do it, don't you do it. And then of course I put the top because chicken hawks, you know, they just be flying. Now, their water's empty because I'm out here to water them, and I pulled their pools up because them ducks are some filthy little animals. You gotta get them clean. That came from a Goodwill for 20 bucks. Go price it at Lowe's. It's about a fat 150, 200. Now, the chicken coop itself, I got all scrap materials and beat up discount materials. Girl, I know you laying. From Lowe's, and I built this last year. It held up through every single tornadic supercell we had come through here. Sister, will you just get with it? Everybody's waiting. Now, this looks like real crap, okay? This is the Turk Alerts little shed. Now, the only reason why this was put here was because we had the Arctic Blast come through. Hey, Brigil. And I'm out here in, this morning in the cold and fog trying to clean everything because it's a wreck. Moving on to the garden and stuff. Yeah, showed you the greenhouse. Now, look at this. My husband calls all this trash. This is all gardening goat, okay? He doesn't know what he's talking about. This was a child's play set for ping pong ball or like beer pong outside. Yep, it is now holding mint. These are kitty litter tubs. Yeah, yeah. Now they're holding herbs. Look at that. And what I do is I drill holes about two inches down, fill this much full of oyster shells for a calcium source, mainly for peppers and, and tomatoes. And then, yeah, water from the bottom. There's also drilled holes at the bottom. I take literal poop and turn it to gold around here. That's what I do best. Being broke will make you resourceful. And then once you have money, you know no other way. That's the key to getting rich. Somewhere you feel free. Man, this might be the only damn thing I ever seen that's okay in Philadelphia. All right, you gotta give them K5 blade. All right, this is the. Oh fuck! What did I do? What did I do? Excuse me? Oh fuck! It's a bomb. Hold them and hold them
cavity You ain't that fluid, bitch, I've been napping me Make me cut off his water, they ain't mad at me Forever it's a fuck gravity Here it goes Everybody want a piece of the pie, but ain't not nigga chipping the Got them eggs. Ain't nobody follow you here, did they? How many you need? Two. I'm gonna do two for five this time, but after that, can't do it no lower than that. Don't. Here you go, boys. I call this video Things in a Kentucky Yard That Just Makes Sense. Kerosene heater for when it gets cold outside. Thank goodness we're protecting it from water damage. Good old camper top for when I shit in the bed and they get mad at me and make me come out here and sleep. No Kentucky yard would be complete without a bunch of random motors just laying around. And if you're a mechanic, you can already tell why this one's gone to shit. Riding lawnmower. Riding lawnmower. Absolutely fucked riding lawnmower. Lawnmowers you could probably ride if you tried hard enough. A whole ass single wide trailer in which I do not remember where it came from. I think they call this thing a get the fuck out of the way. Can't forget the car that's probably full of fucking snakes. A truck full of junk hauling a trailer full of junk. I think I pretty much summed everything. Oh, God damn. Since I just fell in it, that brings up the last thing. Random ass holes nobody tells me about. Coffee. You don't need coffee. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yeah. What you got there, DJ? Redneck forklift. Let's give it a whirl. Raise her up, Bo. That's plenty high enough. Heck yeah. Redneck forklift. Don't you know it's going to rain? Is the sun going to shine and the birds going to chirp too? The fish are already wet, baby. We ain't worried about it. <laughs> Point the camera at someone who stresses you out. Hear me out. Yes, there's a lot of fish in the sea, okay? 
But you know what else there's a lot of in the sea? Trash. There's a lot of trash in the sea. Don't cut their legs out from underneath them just because something is a little hard for them. Let them explore, let them search, let them try new things, let them work at it. Sometimes failure is just giving them an opportunity to try something else. Parents are there to support your kids. Parents are there to help them when things get hard. Parents also need to be there to allow them to do the job themselves and try to figure it out. Their reward from doing the job themselves is 10 times more than if a parent or an adult will help them. Let them search, let them find it. They will persevere. Many are called, few are chosen. Where you gonna be when the dead are risen? Don't you wanna go home? Don't you wanna go home? Don't you wanna go home? The Bible tells of a better home where we never more shall roam. Don't you wanna go home? Don't you wanna go home? Don't you wanna go home? Where you gonna be, what you gonna be doing When you hear that trumpet blowing When the Lord shall come and take his children home Will you be lost, will you be crying Be among the living or the dying When the Lord shall come and take his children home Jesus has prepared the way are you ready for that day? Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to go home? Don't you want to go home? Get on. Luca! Bueno? Pinyu! Bueno? Pinyu! Bueno? Have y'all seen where at the livestock auctions laying hens are going for like 35 bucks and roosters 25 which is unheard of not only do we need to protect our egg supply i feel like now we need to start rotating shifts around the coops with some pew pews and freedom seeds if you know what i mean in my car. So
Okay, so I just recently moved to Western North Carolina from Colorado. This is no hate to this TikToker because she seems like a nice person. But I can't lie, this TikTok kind of pissed me off. Not just because of her, but just because of like this generalized concept that this video perpetuates. She goes on to say, you know, she moved here from Colorado and all of our breweries are like on back roads and it's like a scene from Deliverance, which if you don't know, Southerners do not take kindly to being compared to the movie Deliverance. So people in the comments were justifiably kind of upset about that. But she did apologize, so like nobody go on her page and hate on her. But then she says, I'm at a brewery in Hendersonville. If I get kidnapped, you know where to start looking for me. If you know Hendersonville, you know how freaking comical that is. Honey, ain't nobody in Hendersonville gonna kidnap your ass. Especially not now, because of all of these old retired people and these rich people who work from home, who live from out of state, who come here so they can avoid paying higher taxes from where they're from, they've kicked all the locals out. So if you're gonna get kidnapped, it's not gonna be from one of us. Then one lady in the comments goes, I just moved here from so-and-so. Ignore all the haters in these comments because People here just aren't that nice. Honey, we were. We were all about the Southern hospitality until we got sick and tired of people going, hmm, I don't really like where I live. Let me go live somewhere different. And then they move here and then they're shocked that it's different. If you don't know, Western North Carolina and Appalachia in general is predominantly known for being poor. It's just kind of a slap in the face for people to know that about this area and still move here and our area still not be good enough for them. It's not that we hate you. It's not that we're saying y'all can't move here. But if you're going to move here, you need to respect the area. You need to respect the locals. You need to respect the land. And whenever we hear somebody say, oh yeah, I just moved from so-and-so and you're complaining about this area, we roll our eyes because you're part of the problem. Our home is getting gentrified. I know I've kind of gone on a tangent, but that's why people are a little upset about this video. I can't just sit back and, and feel this way without trying to change it. You got the Black Lives Matter and stuff. We all matter, hell. It's time for us to stop this today. No more walls today. We're gonna show the rest of the country how we came together. Everybody get it in here, man. Everybody get it in. Everybody get it in. Everybody, everybody get it in. Everybody get it in. And I, I thank you so much, as I am so humble, that you allowed us to come a long time ago. And that today, I pray again. Thank you so much. I pray that everybody makes it. Amen. 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 Dear black people and dear white people, watch this video in its entirety. I have something to say. I have a chart. And what this chart does is breaks down and shows you the different skin tones of brown. Now, I'm going to need for y'all to hold on to your seats and really look at this and study it with your mind because this is going to be groundbreaking. After this video is done, do it, stitch, and show it to everybody. Because today is the day we end black and white. There is no person alive that are any of these colors. These are the shades of brown. These colors are the color of every human being that walks the earth. If you can find the color of your skin... On these shades of brown, you are not black and you are not white. I'm sick of falling for the same social construct and I'm sick of it going from generation to generation. Today it stops. We will no longer refer to anyone as black or white. Puerto Ricans, you're brown. Asians, Afro-Asiatics, you're brown. What we call 
white people, you're brown. Black people, you're dark brown. And now it's us, the human brown race versus the elites who want to be called white. We are now our brothers and sisters. We now begin to strive for unconditional love, unity, and equality amongst ourselves. A socialist democracy is what's needed to eradicate this nonsense called capitalism, communism, any of that mess. It's time to come together. Okay, I'm ready to change my life. I will not do that. Next. I will also not, not be doing that. No. No, impossible. I don't usually speak, I'm just the guy that provides the sound. But this last year I've been called upon to speak a couple of different times and I wanted to share something. In the summer of 1970, a 14-year-old girl was raped at a 4th of July party. Nine months later, she gave birth to me. I was given up for adoption, was raised by a Christian family. When my dad uh, had, a, had a policy when we were kids that we could take him aside and ask him what a word meant if we didn't know what it meant. I heard abortion mentioned in school when I was in elementary school by a high schooler and I didn't know what it meant. And the night he explained it to me, I didn't hardly sleep. Because I grew up on a farm where we did everything we could to save every single animal born on that farm. And to know that people were killing their children because they were inconvenient. Horrified me. And from that day on, I was a pro-lifer. And then in 2002, working on a campaign, I, I built this podium right here. And it's not anything great, it's something I threw together on a Saturday. My brother did the welding for me on the metal. But on June 24th of this year, the end of row was announced from a podium of a product of rape that the other side says should not exist. The circumstances of my conception do not determine my worth as a human being. I am pro-life for the whole life. God bless you all and thank you for coming. Now what I'm about to say next is going to sting like a negative DNA test on the Maury Show. Because the truth hurts. Sorry but not sorry. Black folks. We are becoming a reflection of white slave masters. And before y'all shoot the messenger, listen to what I'm saying. Step away from how you feel and receive logic. Because the truth isn't based on feelings, it's based on logic. Facts. Anyway, when I say that we're becoming a reflection of white slave masters, it's because of this new age cultural appropriation bullshit. For instance, we get mad at our own people for dating outside of our race. But that's exactly what we had to fight against back in our day. I think it was called Loving versus Virginia here in my state. My daddy is the product of a biracial relationship that was considered illegal. We got out there and fought with civil rights movements so that we could shop in the same stores and to use the same public transportation. But then we turn around and tell our people, shop black stores only. They didn't get anywhere dividing us. We won't get nowhere dividing them because division would never succeed amongst a group of people that God created. We are all the body of Christ. And God gave all of us dominion over Satan. And what is Satan? An evil entity that came to divide so that he could seek, devour, and destroy. Three, two, one, go! Welcome to the Red King. All the flavor bitches say I'm delicious. I'ma have all you motherfuckers lay in a ditch. I'ma kill all you rappers. I'ma aim with precision. They was rocking with your ass till they made a decision. All my friends making millions cause they know I'm my bitch. Check it.
Hey, Grandpa. It's me. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Just wanted to hear your voice. Um, may I help you? Like, do we got a problem? What you looking at? <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm coming home, I'm coming home Tell the world I'm coming home Let the rain wash away All the pain of yesterday I know my kingdom awaits And they've forgiven me that shop around here? I'm going on it Do you think it's going to be raining and, um... It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be here. <laughs> hey, your boys are home. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Daddy. You made me cry. <laughs> What are we here for? Where's Daddy been? He's in Korea. Have you missed him? You still waiting for Daddy? Yeah. Are you still waiting? Are you getting impatient? Gonna never love one like you. I see Dad. We laugh until we think we'll die ever on a summer day. Nothing new is sweet to land with you. But every street is on a free like it's only you and me. Jesus, you have something to see. Are you crying?
Let's make these talented young ladies famous. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the pale